welcome back to the type study of class mammalia in the last class we discussed the gender characters morphology and the integumentary system of rabbit today we are moving on to the skeletal system the skeletal system consists of axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton axial skeleton is formed by skull vertebral column ribs and sternum whereas the appendicular skeleton consists of limb bones and limb girdles the skull of rabbit has a posterior cranial part developed for lodging the brain and an anterior fascia part comprising mainly the jaws there are three pairs of sense capsules intimately attached with the skull first one is the olfactory capsule that lodges organs of smell and next is the auditory capsule that contains organs of hearing and orbit encloses our eyes the various bones constituting the cranial region can be grouped into three segments an anterior frontal segment middle temporoparietal segment and a posterior occipital segment the occipital segment that articulates with the first vertebra by a pair of projections called occipital condyles based on the number of occipital condyles skull can be generally classified as monocondylic and dicondylic since we have two occipital condyles mammalian skull is considered as dicondylic skull vertebral column of rabbit includes about 45 to 47 vertebrae and is differentiated into five regions cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and caudal let us have a look at the structure of a typical vertebrae this is the centrum in the embryonic stage each centrum consists of three pieces namely a thick middle portion or centrum proper and anterior and posterior disc called epiphysis later on epiphysis fuses with the centrum proper so that articular surfaces of centrum are more or less flat and such a vertebrae is called a sealess or amphiplatin vertebrae in between adjacent centrum there are thin pads of fibrocartilage known as intervertebral disc these act as shock absorbing cushions and also prevent the friction and the consequent wear and tear of vertebrae produced from the centrum is the neural arch that encloses the neural canal at the base of the neural arch is a pair of notches they are called intervertebral notches when adjacent vertebrae closely articulate their notches come close together and form intervertebral foramina for the passage of spinal nerves neural arch bears a median neural spine and two lateral transverse processes centrum bears paired articular processes namely presygapophysis and postsygapophysis for the articulation with the vertebrae in front and behind respectively just behind the presygapophysis is a pair of large forwardly and upwardly directed processes called metabophysis similarly at the base of the postsygapophysis is a pair of small backwardly directed processes called anapophysis metabophysis and anapophysis are collectively called mammillary processes in the cervical region vertebrae are characterized by reduced centrum short transverse processes and neural spine presence of vertebral arterial foramen at the base of transverse processes and presence of a pair of much reduced and double headed bony ribs completely fused with the transverse processes out of the seven cervical vertebrates first and second are highly modified first vertebrae is the atlas and it is a ring shaped structure without a proper center it consists of a large neural arch but with a reduced neural spine the neural canal is very large anteriorly it bears a pair of shallow concave faces of four articulation with occipital condyles which we discussed earlier a pair of articular faces are also present posteriorly for the articulation with the second vertebra that is axis 
the transverse processes are broad long and wing like and these are perforated basally by the vertebra arterial canals moreover psychopophysis are absent coming to the second vertebra that is axis it has a broad centrum with a peg like forward process known as odontoid process it articulates with the uh, atlas and this atlanto odontoid articulation act as a pivot for the rotation of the head of rabbit next is the thoracic vertebra they are somewhat similar to the typical vertebrae with a well developed centrum neural arch long neural spine transverse processes pre and post psychopophysis after that there are 6 to 7 lumbar vertebrae these are the largest vertebrae and lumbar vertebrae except the first two are generally taken as typical vertebrae which we have already discussed then comes the sacral vertebrae all the four sacral vertebrae fuse together to form a bony plate called sacrum it is wedged between the ilia of the pelvic girdle the first sacral vertebra bears a pair of articular faces for articulation with ilia to form iliosacral joint caudal vertebrae are mostly 15 to 16 bony pieces without prominent neural spine and transverse processes only a few anterior caudals have neural arches spines and psychopophyses there is a progressive decrease in the size of the vertebrae towards backward the last part of axis skeleton consists of ribs and sternum and they constitute the thoracic framework there are tall pairs of ribs articulate with tall thoracic vertebrae each rib has two parts a shaft and head shaft consists of a dorsal bony portion called vertebral ribs and a ventral cartilaginous part called costal or sternal rib the first eight pairs of vertebral ribs are double headed and each of them has a dorsal head called tuberculum and a ventral one called capitulum the tuberculum articulates with the tubercular facet of the transverse process and capitulum with the capitular facet of the center the last four pairs of ribs are monocephalous that is single headed without tubercula the sternal portions of the first seven pairs of ribs directly articulate with the sternum so they are called direct ribs or true ribs the remaining ones are generally false ribs of this the sternal portions of the 8th and 9th ribs do not directly articulate with the sternum but remain fused with the 7th sternal rib so they are only indirectly connected with the sternum and they are called indirect ribs the sternal portions of the last 3 pairs of ribs neither reach the sternum no articulate with other ribs so they are called floating ribs last part of the axis skeleton is sternum and sternum is a long slender rod situated in the mid ventral line of thorax it consists of seven bony pieces called sternebrae lying in a row one behind the other sternum can be divided into three parts namely presternum or manubrium formed of a single sternum a mesosternum formed of five sternebra and lastly the metasternum or cephisternum formed of a single sternebra attached to the cephisternum is a broad cartilaginous plate called cephioid or cephisternal cartilage this is all about the axis skeleton of rabbit thank you so much for watching this video please share and subscribe